This is what happens when I try to be proactive and set up a live stream beforehand. My goodness, hopefully you guys can find me again. Hello, I'm live. Apparently I had a video playing in the background of my other live when I was starting this. So we're just gonna, we're winging it, we're winging it. Next time I'll know to set this up uh, appropriately, which is really frustrating because I had like 15 to 20 people in my last stream when I canceled it. So hopefully you guys can find me now live for real here in this one because I can't restart a live once I canceled it. My goodness. Well, today we're shipping. We got a lot to do. We had a big whatnot sale and I actually learned something new that I have to implement pretty immediately into my shipping, um, which is, hello everyone. Hello, where's Jordan? Who knows? Who knows? Her brain's gone. That's for dang sure. I'm sorry. Thank you guys for finding me. <laughs> I don't understand what I did in my settings of YouTube to set it up for mobile. But then when I started my mobile stream, I was like, you know what, we're going to wing it. Then it immediately started playing music in the background and wouldn't let me cancel the video that was watching. That was my video that was live streaming. Don't understand. Don't understand. Thank you. You're so sweet. I feel like a hot little frazzled mess today. I just got home like 10 minutes ago. And uh, now I've got to organize and ship out all of these boxes before tomorrow because Grant's dad is coming to visit for the weekend and I have to clean the house. So we've got to get this done today. Um, I did learn that these USPS first class package labels that I was doing before, I cannot put those in a uh, USPS priority mail box. I feel like that was common sense, but I was not, not catching on to it. I didn't catch that. So like this one, this one says USPS priority mail. This one says first class, which means I have to put it in a unmarked box. So right now, the first thing I'm doing is separating into two different piles of what needs to go where so I can grab the right boxes and not uh, mess things up. Hello, hello, everybody. Hello from the UK. How is the weather? What time of day is it? So many questions. Priority mail, priority mail. The priority mail are easier because they, you can get free boxes in priority mail. First class ones are usually smaller items, but it makes it a lot harder because then I have to find a box that will work priority mail. And I have some really heavy things that I'm shipping today too, which will be pretty interesting. Uh, if you weren't in my sale, I sold a big set, a set of three super heavy crystal mixing bowls. I don't know how I'm going to find a box for them, but we're going to, where there's a will, there's a way we're going to figure it out. It's going to happen. I'm not afraid to ship anything and we're, we're trying it out. All right. Now, the second step that I do is I put all of the stuff that I sold in with the label. So I can kind of categorize how many things are in each box. And oh, these are super easy. Honestly, I'm going to get these out the door right now. Where did I put these? I had these in my buy it now section and they sold pretty immediately. It is this really pretty. Um, necklace, well, both of these necklaces, but they're both stones and super pretty and they are super easy to ship. So I'm excited about that. You enjoy all my videos. I'm a fresh breath of air. I am so happy that you feel that way about me. It's when I am and you're absolutely freezing. <laughs> Thankfully the snow has disappeared. That is good. That is good. I just talked to my coworker today and we, we were complaining about how in California yesterday it was like 65 70 and we dressed for cold weather expecting it to be rainy and it was too hot and she's like it snowed here yesterday so <laughs> all right now i gotta find what should i wrap i think i'm gonna wrap them each in an individual 
bubble wrap pack just to make sure that they don't chip or crack or do something when I'm shipping them, but then I'm going to put them in a poly mailer. So that'll be easy. Big snowstorm there in Maine. Oh boy. Fun fact, I've never seen snow. Where is my bubble wrap? Oh, here's my bubble wrap. Here it is. And as you can see, I'm just chilling on the floor here in my garage. This is the how I like to work. Open space. Big open space. Nothing hampering with my movements. Okay, here we go. Did I take my address off of this yet? No, no, I did not. Can't wait for some sunshine. Wouldn't well, what you wouldn't give to get out the summer wardrobe. I know the feeling. I know the feeling. It's still not quite warm enough here to wear shorts. Although I did try to wear workout shorts one day and regretted it immediately. Oh, come on. Okay, get off my hand. Off, 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 sticker off. Thank you. Bubble wrap, bubble wrap. Yesterday, wait, was it yesterday or Monday? I don't even know what day it is. Today's Tuesday, yesterday. Uh, yesterday, our sink broke. Apparently, something was wrong with the little like button that switches it from like a shower spray to a stream spray. And my boyfriend was messing around with it, trying to get it to fix. And he like unscrewed the whole thing and then screwed it back on. And then the whole thing just collapsed, fell apart. So that was like... 48 hours of trying to figure out how to get our sink fixed, how to track down the right tools, figuring out how to, we almost had to saw off a part that was like stuck on the counter. And then I came in there and I was like, absolutely not. Do not take a sawzall anywhere near my marble countertop. Uh, there's, there's a nut we need to loosen down there. We just need to get some leverage. And that worked luckily. Otherwise we we're going to have to call a plumber out. And it was like a flat fee of $175 to come and install a faucet. So definitely glad we didn't have to do that. How much do you think it costs to wrap a medium-sized package shipping? Okay. Uh, to ship it on your own? Or are you talking about like the use of bubble wrap and tape and the box itself? because oh. <laughs> all right these two things going in the baggie we got to make sure we put the packing slip let me tape up the top there's so many variables with shipping and it's just obnoxious. And the thing about all of your packing supplies is like, you got to distribute it between, you know, the, all of the packages you're using it for. Like I'm not buying tape just for one package, you know, and I don't really know how much bubble wrap I use for each object but I can make it like a, a general broad assumption, but I would say anywhere from like a dollar if you're also purchasing a box, but then it also depends. Are you buying it wholesale? Are you reusing a box that you already got? Are you using a priority mailbox? You know, like I'm, there's a lot of nuance to shipping and it's incredibly frustrating. Let me pull my chat up here. So that I can see it better. What would you? I am live right now. YouTube hates me, I swear. It's like uh, if I upload a video, they're like, mm, no, this cleaning, don't like it. You can't do that. Why are you doing that? I try to go live. They're like, mm, you can only go live from your phone. Sorry. I don't get it. I don't get it. 
All right. Taken off. First package out the door. Now, like 30 more. Here we go. You do, you use blue painter's tape on bubble wrap, holds the bubble wrap and doesn't get torn and can be reused. Oh, that's a really good idea. Homeownership is so much fun. We have been in our home for 23 years. Repairs and maintenance are nonstop. I, I feel that. It's kind of been nonstop since we moved in too. And it's just obnoxious. Everything from, you know, the heater not working correctly. It wasn't hooked up to the thermostat and apparently the thermostat was faulty. And then what else has happened? Our Wi-Fi. I, I don't know what it is about this week, but everything in technology is just kaput. It is like my Wi-Fi hasn't worked all week. My Bluetooth headphones don't want to connect to my computer. Uh, the Spotify app on my computer didn't want to work today. Like the network issues on one of the websites I use just wasn't working. I'm just, can we figure it out? Can we just you can get free USPS priority boxes for items over a pound. Yeah, so that's usually what I use. And I it just completely spaced my mind that I couldn't use those for the smaller items because I was like, oh, everything up to a pound. But that's that wasn't it. That wasn't it. Working for USPS, that parcel would be really confusing. Looks like a prime package, but it's first class. <laughs> I know I'm trying to reuse my supplies like I love recycling things and I have an entire corner of like hoarded boxes and I'm not allowed my boyfriend's not allowed to throw away any boxes anymore so it's uh it's funny it's hilarious half of my shipping or half of my storage is just going to empty boxes do do Next up, we've got these little Pyrex salt and pepper shakers that sold. I need a little box for you guys. I'm also going to try the trick if I don't have enough small boxes. I'm going to try the box in a bag method because I do have a lot of poly mailers, like the really big ones, because I was doing clothes before. So if you put a priority mail box in a poly mailer, then you can use it as first class. Where are you? Where are you? Need, need, need. Tiny little box. Too tiny, too tiny. Ooh. And this box has wrappings in it. That's nice. You know what? This one's gonna have to do. I think they'll fit in here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh no. Nope. Hmm. Oh, this guy. It's kind of a little too big, but it's better than nothing. We'll just stuff it with some paper. I'd rather things be protected than not. And then you got to make sure that, you know, your wrappings and stuff aren't going over the weight of whatever the generated label is. It's so complicated and annoying sometimes. Wish there was an easier way to do shipping. Someone should invent a shipping service where they just come and pick up everything that you sold and uh, ship it for you. So many people would be resellers if you did that. Oh, my done piles over there. What is the temperature here right now? It is a brisk 65 degrees. <laughs> the high was 67 today. Did I already answer that question? I don't even know. Where's the best place to get poly mailers? I got mine from Uline. I, you can get a lot of them for a relatively low cost. 
I don't know if there's any better places. If you have an eBay store, you get $25 of free shipping supplies from them once a quarter. Oh, huh. including poly bags. That's great to know. I've been, I, I don't want to set up an eBay store. That's not my vibe. I'm not here to store things, but I have heard good things about the benefits of it. Oh boy. This guy. This guy is going to be, you're so delicate. Okay. We're not going to break you. We're going to say you down gently. Okay. I am still devastated that the bigger plate of this broke. But now I don't have to worry about shipping it. So I'm not like that devastated. <laughs> but it is truly sad that it broke. But this guy's going to get a lot of bubble wrap because it is thin. And it's lots of cushion. I want you bouncing around in the back of those USPS trucks. Without protection. Yes, I'm back. You found my other new live stream. I wish I could have just restarted that live stream, but they end it and they're just like, nap, sorry, bye, forever. Not helpful. That was the one time I set up all of the like description and the tags and like set it up for the future, but it's fine. It's fine. We're here now. I need a box. Where did that other box? That one. I bet you it'll fit in here. Oh no, I don't think it will. I changed my mind. Will it? It's like just too small. I will figure out how to use this box tonight. That is now my goal. That box is getting used. But now I need a super small box for this again. Mm. I need a small box. I need a small box. Oh, what about you? What about you? This one's small enough? Uh, hooray! Got paper. Cushion there. Got more paper. Cushion around. Voila. Lovely. It's a good thing I buy a lot of weird and random shaped items, so I have a lot of weird and random boxes. <laughs> All right. Next up. What is next up on my list that sold? F.B. Rogers gravy dish. Gravy dish. Oh, and amazing that this is not something that needs bubble wrap. I can just shove some paper in there and it will be protected. Actually, we'll use some of this bubble wrap. But it doesn't need to be actually bubble wrapped because it is not breakable. Where is my big box of paper? Oh, God. Perfect. Gravy dish. At the door. My lip. My address is still on here. Uh. I really like doing these lives to like one someone to talk to while I'm doing my shipping because I'm a big uh, like if I'm talking to someone I can get a lot of work done without like paying it like realizing I'm doing work and two I can track how long it takes me to do all of my shipping 
and then you guys get something to do and entertain yourself with. So it is a mutually beneficial agreement. Whoop. All right. Oh, are they doing a, is that just her new live video? I forget what time she posts her videos every single day. You'd be wearing shorts in Maine at 65 degrees. Oh my goodness. I, I mean, I could, I think if I got used to it, I could do it. It, I'm just a baby when it comes to cold. I'm always cold. Oh no. Big old pot jug. This isn't a small one at all. In fact, he's actually quite heavy and does need some bubble wrap, but I think this box is perfect. Oh, that, that worked out beautifully. This is when I wish I had like the bigger bubbles, but it's okay. We make do with what we got. Also, I ordered a shipment from Bubble Boy for more bubble wrap. And I ordered two big rolls because I was like, you know what? I'm going to need them. I'm going to go through them. And then I sent them to my old address. So I contacted them and they're looking into it right now. But hopefully I don't run out of bubble wrap before they come. Big old pot jug. That's what I call it. My address off of this one. I don't think it's not. Apparently it is. Oh, see, I almost forgot the pack and flip. Almost forgot the pack and flip. You have the small and large bubble rolls. Yeah, I need to, I need to get the big bubble rolls. I'm starting to sell enough of those items where it would be practical to have it, but really it's only like one or two things that I've needed them for so far. So it's hard to justify having a whole big roll. It's not live, but it's, yeah, first things first. My mom gets priority. That's fair. Until you like me better because I'm funnier than her. Is that the roll of bubble wrap that was over $100? Yeah, this is one of them. I think I bought two of them and they were $96. That's what it was. So they're $45 each. But yes, wildly expensive. Unnecessarily expensive. Okay, we got a celery dish. We have a souvenir plate and we have the black shell dishes. Dun, 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 dun. Da, 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 da. And then we are done with first class stuff and we can move on to priority boxes. Who is texting me? Oh no, it's a group chat. It's a group chat and they're having a conversation without me. I'm muting my computer. Okay. It fits. Oh, Rob, where'd you go? Hey, you do. This is such a cool little plate. 
You heard my phone ding. Someone's going to be very confused when they get this box because they're going to be like, I didn't order a workout thing. I don't want to work out. Don't worry. So glad that resellers don't use packing peanuts. I used to. I used to. I just ran out of them. And fortunately, I had enough of uh, this packing material from um, all those boxes I unpacked that I didn't need to use them anymore. Packing peanuts are really hard to sh... Oh, there's no sticking the uh, pack and slip in this one easily. I always do this. Get in there. Get in there. We'll tape it. We'll tape it in. We'll tape it in. Get in there. Okay. I just put one big long piece of paper. That won't slip out. Look at that. We had to do that anyway. We wanted to seal up this, this seam anyway. Nothing happened. Oh. Because I'm funnier. Because I'm funnier than her. She knows it. She admits it. <laughs> Are you still going to sell from your mom's store if you get the chance now that Carrie is leaving? Um, I am going to try to put some clothes in there. The way she's transitioning everything is now she'll have individual like shelves or racks. So I could still potentially have just like one like shelf of clothing in there. What's hard for me is keeping the shelves stocked. I might have to like ship stuff out there and be more intentional of uh, putting stuff out there, which is why I don't have a space there right now. And that's you know, another reason why all of this change is happening. It takes a lot to maintain a booth. And I I can't do it. I have so much on my plate, as you guys probably know. It's hard. Like, a brick and mortar store is a different beast entirely than selling online. And I don't think any of us expected... You know, you start something and you're like, oh, this will be fun. This is exciting. And then like the initial excitement wears off and you're like, oh, I have to keep, I have to keep doing this. Oh, this is a lot of work. Yeah. Oh, see, me and Carrie, there's nothing that could break us up. I love Carrie. She's a doll. The box I sent you was dog greenie chews? Yep, I get a lot of those. <laughs> They're really thick boxes, too. I like how they protect items. They're good shipping boxes. Oh, yeah. So I'm sure you'll hear about it in the video, but Carrie decided that it was time for her to retire and take some things off of her plate. So there's some changes in the store. It's really hard to, like, maintain just, like, store inventory at all. If any of you have ever worked retail, you know. Like, I remember my first job, I was working at Victoria's Secret, and it was the start of their, like, big quarterly sale, and all they had me do, the entire five-hour shift, was go through the panties and fold them. 
like just over and over and over and over. And it's like people come in and like move stuff and take stuff and then like put it somewhere else or put it in a different room or like throw it across, hang it like a flagpole. Like, I don't know what they do, but <laughs> keeping up with that is a lot. It's intensive. You like my earrings today? Thank you. They're donuts. She is going to be greatly missed, but you know what? I'm happy for her that she gets to like retire and take a breather and go see her family more often. You know, that's as sad as change is and as hard as it is, like it is a constant. Change is the only constant in life and it sucks. But it has to happen. We can't be the same forever. Okay, two boxes, two boxes, two boxes. Box, box, box. This box is a little too big. Oh, this might work. Oh, is this? Ah, okay, these might fit in here. These might fit in here. All of them are juggling so much, you don't know how they do it. I don't either. And honestly, like, I don't blame any of them for wanting to pull back on, you know, stuff too. And me and my mom, we are superhumans when it comes to multitasking and all of the things we can juggle. Like there, there are so many things on our plate at any given time. And a lot of the times we forget that other people can't maintain the same level of like productivity output that we can. So it's, it's intense. I mean, I'm sure you guys remember my video where when I first started this whole whatnot thing, I wanted to give up. And that that was a, a true sentiment of how I was feeling with the overwhelming state that just selling online has and how this stuff can like take over your mental health, your physical health, your time to do the little things around the house and time spent with the ones you love. Like all of those things are weighed and calculated. And sometimes you just need to say like, hey. I want to go spend five hours every single day with my significant other. And that's okay to make that joyous for yourself. Oh, gosh. It's just it's just a little too small. You're almost perfect. Well, I wonder if we can... Did you buy the naughty earrings last night? Yes, I did. Yes, I did buy the naughty earrings along with the vodka bottles. So what's cute is I have little water bottles, right? For like the daytime, for hydration, for work appropriate events. And then at nighttime, I can now switch to the vodka bottles. I'm very jazzed about that. That was such a fun show too. I know a few of you had recommended I go to her whatnot sale and I just hadn't like lined up with the time that I was on whatnot and the time she was live, we kept missing each other. And someone mentioned that she was live right as I was ending my show. So we raided into her with like 60 people and she was so touched. And she even sent me a message tonight that, you know, she's still thinking about how I raided into her and how impactful it was. And it's just, I feel so honored to be able to like bring that happiness to someone. That's why I love this community. That's why I keep doing all of this and working hard because honestly it's just so amazing to be involved with all of you guys and all the people that you meet along the way you're all amazing well beside the trolls but they're fun too in their own way You don't like change. Yeah, it's it's really hard to deal with. And I think that's a lot of the times, you know, people 
butt heads or like me and my boyfriend, like all of our fights are basically about like one person has to change their norm of what they did before they were in a relationship. And like, there has to be compromise and there has to be like extensive talks over and over and over again about like, you left the dishes in the sink. Well, I was going to clean them up after I did this. And I needed to use the dishes to do this and you left them there. And so it's like this constant state of trying to change for the better. like a box that will work. Oh, I, guess I, I guess you don't need my chewy packing slip inside of your whatnot package. Unless you really want to know what I buy for my dogs. Speaking of which, Daisy, so since she was a little puppy, she's had this weird like little limp thing that happens. Her knees, um, apparently the way that the, the kneecap sits on the socket, the socket isn't deep enough to like hold the kneecap in all the way. So it like easily dislocates. Um, and they said that they were going to monitor it as she grew. Hopefully it was going to get better. But she's still limping a lot. And I think we're at the stage now where she's not going to like grow and develop anymore. And luckily, it's in only in one leg, not both of them like it was before. So the exercises we've been doing with her are working, just not enough on that one. So I think she's going to have to go get some surgery this year to deepen the canal of her kneecap so that it doesn't dislocate when she runs around after a lot of exercise. Because you know that girl has the energy of a little energizer bunny. She cannot be stopped. And she won't even stop when she's like limping. She'll keep pushing herself, which really worries me. You guys make me tired. I make myself tired sometimes. When I like go back and take an inventory of everything that I'm doing and everything that I want to do. I'm just like, oh my gosh, why, how, how do I do this? First of all, and why am I doing this? <laughs> and then don't get me started on like trying to manage a social life with all of this too, because that's important, maintaining friendships. You've been doing eBay since 1999, and this year you started Poshmark in February Macari because you were scared. Now you think that's why you hadn't done it sooner. That makes sense. But yeah, change is really hard, especially adding a new platform that you're selling on that you had no idea how to do before. Like learning a new skill, so freaking hard. I need to put the, I need to put the label of where it's going to on this. You've been married for 47 years, and it just seems to be a man thing. They think they don't feel. They don't. They really don't. Well, most of the time, it's ironic because Grant is, like, the clean, like, schedule guy. And I am the, I'll get around to it when I can. And it's, it's this weird dynamic of, like, he's always running around cleaning up after me. And I have ADHD, so I struggle with object permanence and um executive functioning so for example if i see dishes in the sink i'm like okay i could do those but i have to put them in the dishwasher and the dishwasher is full so i have to run the dishwasher and then unload it before i can put them in the dishwasher but before i do that the cabinet's a bit of a mess and i want to organize those cups before i run that and like it's just this trail of i can't do that right now because that involves 10 things and i don't have time for 10 things so I don't do the one thing. And then object permanence is if I do not see it, it does not exist. If it is not in front of my face, I don't remember it's there. Uh, and a lot of that goes down to like food in the fridge. I have to have things like there, like it cannot be in a drawer. It cannot be in a little baggie from the store because it just, if I can't see it right there in front of my face, I'm like, we have no food to eat. And then I end up buying four heads of broccoli because I didn't think we had any. 
when I checked when I was making my list for the store. That may or may not be the current state of broccoli in our household. But it's tough. It's tough living with someone else and working with other people that have a different style of brain. That's actually what we were talking about at work right now and what contributes to like burnout um, and how you have to be inclusive of the way others think to have a diverse and like whole work environment. Blue Stein. Oh, hot damn. We're on the priority mail stuff. Okay. Now we can go get our priority mailboxes. And not break anything. We're not breaking anything. I need to order more of these. I thought I did order more of these. Hmm. Where are all my boxes? Oh, and then I made the mistake of order these like regional rate boxes. I have no idea what a regional rate is. What's a regional rate box? Does anybody know? If you could fill me in on what that means. And if I'm allowed to use them for priority mail, that would be great because I have no idea what I'm doing, clearly. Did I say my husband? Oh man. One day, one day he will be honored for that title. We'll get there. Have you thought about having a podcast? You know what? I actually have. I have thought about having a podcast like four different times. And I think it would just be like life advice or like how I do things kind of thing. Kind of what I do on my YouTube channel. But I would interview like people that I've given to advice, given advice to over the course of, you know, their lives, my lives. I think it would be really fun. Oh, the sign is yours? Okay, I'll be very careful when packing it then. <laughs> okay. I would love to have a podcast, but I think I would do it like film, film style, like, and put it up as a YouTube video so you could like watch us talking if that makes sense. I'd love to do one with my mom too. We actually thought about this a few years ago, like the difference of like how our generations perceive things and like her trauma in her childhood and how that reflected based on the societal norms and like the difference of like my childhood and the societal norms and like how that kind of impacted things. It's really interesting. We get into a lot of deep conversations. I am, I am definitely one of those people that like, Oh, no holds bar. I will talk about anything and everything with everyone. <laughs> As I'm sure you guys can probably tell. There we go. You use them now as regular priority. Oh, hot damn. That makes me so happy because I'm pretty sure this will fit perfectly in that box. Thank you for believing in me. Ooh. It sounds cliche, but every time a creator or a YouTuber says like, oh, I wouldn't be here without you. It's meant so genuinely because I legitimately couldn't be here without you guys watching and supporting and commenting and, you know, just being the supportive people you are. And that means so much. And I don't think you guys get enough recognition or appreciation for, you know, that, that level of impact you have on a creator's entire, you know, uh, livelihood. There's some creators that all they do is create content, which I don't know if that's something I would want to do exclusively. I love creating content and I love creating content for brands and consulting with brands on what they can develop for their channel. I think ultimately where I'd like to see myself in my career is 
being a like marketing consultant, kind of like how I am now, and a YouTuber, and going and being like a, a like a speaker, like a public speaker and motivational speaker, if you will. I really want to write a book. I have like written 15 chapters of a book and keep like going through it and picking it and like figuring out what it would look like. I think I need a ghostwriter. I don't think I can just write it by myself. I think I need a ghostwriter to have a different perspective on it. But I, I really think that that would be super helpful for people. And similar to the life advice that I give, it's just a different kind of perspective and how you can change the way you look at things. And I know it's successful because I was a completely different person. Let's say just five years ago. Yeah, like I'm pretty sure five years ago it was when it all started to like shift and turn. And of course it started happening when, you know, my brain was actually fully developed because did you know that your brain isn't fully developed until you're 27 anyway? We put way too much pressure on all the young 20 somethings when their brains literally can't even handle everything that we're throwing at them. Oh, that's heavy. Excited for the turtle cam? I think it's gonna be cool. I'm excited. I was thinking of doing like a, a long like dozer cam. Like, I don't think I could do it indefinitely and I'll have it always on unless he was like wearing a little GoPro, but I would do like just 30 minutes of dozer watching birds chilling by the window with some soft music. You could watch it while you're, you know, doing work or need, need a little buddy next to you. All right, let's see. Japanese bowls, blue, black, black knight plate. Okay, I know what that is. I know what that is. We're going to keep the multi-item things over there. Red glass pitcher. Oh my God, that's going to be impossible to ship. Oh, that's multi things. Multiple things. Cake plate and crystal cracker tray. And Costa Boda candle holders. Costa Boda candle holders. Let's do those. Those are easy, light, simple. Simple box to put them in. Oh, if you can't tell, I'm definitely a leave the hard things to the very, very end kind of person. Most of the time. I like getting... When everything is equal priority, let's let's level the playing ground because I am a project manager and I don't want this getting out there that I just like this is my broad approach to tackling projects. But when everything is equal priority, I like to get as much done in the littlest amount of time first, and then I'll tackle the bigger, more difficult projects towards the end. Obviously, when things are different priorities, they get different levels of uh, allocation in your project schedule, but that's, that's for another time. We're not talking about work right now. I don't want to talk about work. Your oldest is a ghost writer. Oh, okay. What kind of writing style does she have? I might need to get connected with her, but also I'm not at a place where I could pay a ghost writer. We'll see in a year what happens, but I love cats. I have two, two, oh, you have three, two Siamese and one rescue that has, was found at the dump. Oh, little trash kitty. I love a little trash kitty. Dozer's mom was a rescue and then the vet refused to neuter uh, his dad when I told them that they were getting busy. They're like, no, no, it's fine. You have time to wait. I did not. I did not have time to wait. And uh, then Dozer was born. He was actually the first born of the litter of six. This poor kitten that I had was one year old and had six kittens her first time. And um, Dozer was the first. She didn't know what was happening. And she thought that she had to go to the litter box. So she walked down the hallway, realized it was not 
what she needed to do in the litter box, gave birth to Dozer in the hallway <laughs> and walked back to us. And I had to go get him and help her learn how to clean him off. And oh boy, what an experience. But now I have Dozer. He was the most polite little kitten too. I, oh, Dozer baby was, I wish I could go back. He was the first kitten out of the litter that went all the way from the living room and like found his way to the bedroom when we were sleeping one night and started meowing so that I would pick him up and he could sleep with me. And ever since his favorite place to sleep is like on the pillow next to me. He sleeps like a person. He sleeps with his little head like on the pillow facing me. It is the oh cutest thing in the world. Are you gonna fit in here? Oh yeah, you'll fit. Easy peasy. I don't know where her friends. Okay, I'll fit in here. <laughs> you have seven cats at the moment, also six dogs. That is the dream. Honestly, so much fun. Which one? Okay, this fiction is the true or nonfiction is the true. I think fiction. Fiction's like a biography, right? I don't, I read so much and I still can never remember this. It shouldn't be that confusing for my brain, but alas, it is. You have hard things listed last so you get it. Yeah. Have you and your boyfriend, have your have your boyfriend Biddy the cat and yourself sleeping together and it will be so cute. Well, the boyfriend doesn't allow Dozer to sleep in the bedroom. One, because he pees on all of his stuff, which I get. I guess that's a fair reason. But two, he's like incredibly allergic to Dozer. And when he uh, smothers all of his dander on our pillows, Grant has a really bad allergic reaction. So Dozer stays upstairs. He doesn't get to sleep with me anymore, which also I'm not about it. I'm not about it. Poor Dozer has to get banished. Red Italian coffee cups. Japanese bowls. Are they all over there? Where is this stuff? Oh, no, here they are. Bowls and coffee cups. This is the kind of stuff where I'm like, I am not spatially aware enough to know what size box this needs to go in. Because it's four things, and I'm like, oh, it's small enough. It would fit in a small box. But then once you wrap it all up in bubble wrap, it adds so much more size. Also writes mystery. Nonfiction is true. Okay, so I need a nonfiction ghostwriter because it would be a, a biography or like a self-help book. I'm going to forget that. By the next time we talk about this, I'm going to forget it. And yet I can remember where like any given object in my household is at any time. We're like, oh, where was that paper clip that I took off four months ago and sat down on this piece of paper? Like, I'll be like, oh, it's underneath the cabinet beside the, the thingy there, the red thing. And then you'll find it. Like I know those things, but I can't remember the difference between fiction and nonfiction. I have now learned to love this stupid little tabletop tape dispenser. It hasn't cut me, knock on wood, knock on wood, in a while. Oh. Where is the end of the bubble wrap? doesn't even want to rip on the seam. Uh-oh. 
This has a sticker on it still. Get, get. It doesn't really matter if things have a sticker on them, but I like them to be clean when people get them. I don't know. It's also just a pain in the butt to get stickers off. So if I can help someone before they have to do it themselves, I'd rather do it. If those are peas all over, it probably means that he has an infection. Sometimes it takes years before he'll let you know. Oh, no. You have. We have been through the rigmarole with the vet. He has been to the vet 15 times for this. Uh, we've done blood tests. We've done urine tests. He did have a um, little, like, blocked something, something that we took care of. He's on, like, prescription food for it. And he goes back and gets tested every three months just to make sure, just to make sure he doesn't have anything again. Um, we have surmised now, after a year and a half of this behavior, that it is because he is stressed out. He is a stressed little kitty. Uh, and I have done so much to try to get him unstressed. Uh, the bird feeder. The bird feeder was a solution. Get him some enrichment, something to do during the day. Wanted to watch some birds. It helped for a while, but now the birds don't actually come to the window that he sits in all day. So, like, not helpful. Um, he doesn't play with toys, so I can't, like get his energy out and anxiety out with like toys and enrichment that way. He just, he just sits there and stares at them. He's not a big hanging out with toy and like sleeping with me and like being around me all day. That doesn't help either anymore. He's just like, mm, no, nah, I don't like Grant's smell. Not helpful. He beat in my office the other day and it's like a, it's a tantrum when either we're gone too long and he's, you know, missing us or a sitter is at the house. I have to get a sitter just to hang out with him when we're gone too long because his food is automatic, his litter box is automatic, and his water is automatic. That's how special this boy is. And so we finally resorted when there are times of like super high stress, we'll give him some anti-anxiety medication. And that seemed to work thus far. But yeah, Dozer is, he's just my special boy. He deserves it though. I get that, you know, he's, he doesn't have a lot of confidence around Daisy. He doesn't use his claws for anything. Like he's very aware of how sharp his claws are. So he doesn't like smack her to the point where she understands like, hey, I'm not playing in game. Cause she's like, oh, we're playing keep away. We're playing dodge. It's like, no, Daisy, he doesn't, he doesn't want to play with you. You're stressing him out. So We've been doing a lot of training with Daisy as well to not get reactive when Dozer comes down. But again, she's a dog and her natural instinct is hurting and chasing cats. So it's not, it's not helpful. I have tried feel away. It doesn't really do anything. We, I tried the plug-in kind and I think there's another kind or maybe it was something else. I don't remember. But yeah, I've tried it all. I've tried. It's out there. I've tried it. And oh, I have I have three litter boxes for him in the span of like 12 square feet. There's one in my office. There's one in the guest room. And then there's one in the hallway. All upstairs away from Daisy. And two different types of litter. We've tried different litters. We've tried. I have an automatic expensive one for him so that like every single time he goes in and out, it's clean. There's never a dirty litter box for him. And he just, he is particular. I guess you can say there's a trending theme about the men in my life and uh, their particularness. Just kidding. What is funny though is, so I was looking up reasons cat pee initially on things because he won't ever pee on my stuff. It's just Grant stuff. And I think the reason he started peeing on Grant stuff specifically is because when cats like you and you're in their home, they want to spread their scent onto you. And so marking is a way of spreading their scent onto you because they like you. That's how I tried to spin it to Grant. It didn't work too well. 
He didn't buy it, but it's accurate. It's accurate. It's, it's a possibility. Or Dozer is just upset that there's another man in my life that uh, is taking all of his time away from me. Could be too. Could be too. He gets stressed so easily. It's like you have the world given to you on a platter. And sometimes I'm like, do I need to show you what the other side is? Do you, do you want to see what the outdoor cats are doing? Because I think you have a pretty good life in here, Dozer. On your pretty little princess pillow. It could be the outdoor cats that he's smelling, too. That could be another factor. Because we have a colony of outdoor cats. There's like 12 of them running around our neighborhood at any given moment. And so it could be that he's smelling some of their marking out in our backyard. Who knows at this point? I wish I was a cat mind reader because the money I would pay to figure out how to not make this boy pee all over the place. To get labels off, you can use a hair dryer and the sticker will come off if you want to go another route, Goo Gone Spray. I, I just use like regular cleaning spray. Apparently that dissolves the uh, moisture pretty easily. Uh, set of, uh, there are things that I can't use like an all-purpose spray on. So that's when I'll go either the hot water route or the hair dryer or like goo gone. But for the most of the time, it's not that big a deal. I'm also the kind of person that just leaves the person on whatever item I have indefinitely. I don't care. I think if we go inside right now, we can pull at least five items out of my living room decor that I have thrifted that still probably have a Goodwill sticker on them. It's very likely it's the other outdoor cats. He probably smells and hears them. Yep. Yeah. We had a cat that would pee on our bed when I became pregnant. The doctor said he was just jealous. See? They're little jerks. <laughs> Dozer would absolutely, he did pee on my bed for a while. So I had another orange cat that I adopted during the beginning of 2020. And Dozer made it very clear, very fast that he is a one cat household. And I went through three comforters. I was putting tin foil on my bed every single morning. I would like make my bed and then I would put the tin foil on it. And then uh, that didn't stop him from just doing it in the middle of the night. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. So I had to find and rehome the kitten that I had adopted. Luckily, he went to go live in a bougie La Jolla family. He's fine. He was so cute, though. I love my little cow flipper. But Dozer made it very clear that he is a one cat household because the doctor was saying that because he couldn't get away from where the other cat would go, that was stressing him out. So I figured, hey, a dog, a dog can't get everywhere that the cat can go. So we, that's a non issue. Clearly, I was wrong. Also, Daisy Baton switched us with her personality. Uh, she was so calm and sleepy when we got to go see her first. And uh, she she lied. She lied. She's a good girl, though. I love her. She's finally calmed down a little bit. She's not her erratic puppy self anymore, which is, thank God. <laughs> She also had a problem with learning where the bathroom was outside and it not being in my kitchen. It pretty much took us up until we lived here for us to fully potty train her. And she's still every once in a while, probably like once a quarter, just to remind us that she can. She poops in the kitchen. And it's always the kitchen. And I don't know why it has to be the kitchen. <sighs> I hate to see what the universe is going to give me with a kid if I have all these animals with incontinence in the house. Oh, gosh. Oh, no. That's not. Get out of here. Get out. Okay. This is not. Excuse you.
Jackson Galaxy on YouTube is the cat guy to ask. All right, you betcha. That's exactly what I'm going to do after this because I'm sick of it. I'm sick of the constant battle in my household to make those are happy. <laughs> Oh, thank you for reminding everybody to push my thumbs up button. I'm so bad at that. Every single time I forget. I appreciate you. Appreciate you so much. I you know exactly what's wrong with Dother. He's a cat. Yeah. Yep. I do get why some people aren't cat people. There's a lot of cats that, you know, are super easy and chill and just make life having a cat amazing and then you get the complicated one and then you're like oh my god cats are the worst possible thing ever but it's, i mean dozer is adorable i love him with all of the flaws that he might have he's still his benefits outweigh them tenfold He is the sweetest cat, too. Like, whenever I'm sad or upset, he just, he knows. And he'll come up and cuddle with me and he'll just, you know, love on me and be the sweetest little guy. He's so intuitive. I can't imagine what he's going to be like when we start having kids, though, because... <laughs> He hates being stressed out now. It was really cute. We were watching. What were we watching? We were watching a movie or a TV show and it had a crying baby. And Daisy was sitting there chewing her bone and then all of a sudden looked up and was like tilting her head at the TV, like trying to figure out what was going wrong. Oh, it made my little heart just burst of cuteness. Your puppy is getting ready to turn three and you still call him a puppy. He's just starting to calm down. Oh, I know. I know. Daisy just turned one, I think. Wait, what? What year did I get her? I think I got her. I think she just turned two. Pretty sure she just turned two. And she's still just little bing bong. Bing bong all off the walls. That are all over everywhere. Yeah, I was actually doing really good. So we were using the uh, pine pellets. And those did not track. And it absorbed all of the odors. I really liked those. And then we moved to the, no, the crystals were alongside that because I had to have two different types of litter for him because he uses one box for pee and one box for poo because he's bougie like that. Um, but the crystals in the automatic litter box were also like very low track. Now we have this weird sand litter that I'm trying out with him. And it's like anytime he walks by it, his tail like swooshes a cup out and puts it in the hallway. Animals are a lot of work and a lot of money. Yeah. Yes, they are. And to all of the young people that get animals and, you know, think they're just like a fun little toy for them to have. Like I'm, I hate seeing the videos where people are like, oh, my dog or cat has to get surgery and I can't afford it. Like, I'm just like, oh, sometimes I get it. You know, we go through things and we lose our jobs or we have financial troubles. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the people, the young little 21 year olds that are like, I have a puppy. This is so exciting. And then like the things happen with a puppy and they're like, oh, I can't afford my puppy. And I'm like, we knew this was going to happen. <laughs> Anyone who has a dog or a cat could tell you like at least a thousand dollars a year at the vet. Like at least, bare minimum. In the box. I remember two years ago now, I think it was, Dozer licked himself to the point of having a hairball impacted in his stomach and had to get surgery and it cost $3,500. And thank God I had it. Thank God I have an emergency set fund set up for my animals specifically for that. But oh man, that, that was a scary time. I can't imagine 
what would have happened if I didn't have that? And how many times that does happen when the vets won't put you on a payment plan and you don't have pet insurance because also that's really expensive too. And you don't have an emergency fund. There's nothing you can do for your pet. And like, it wasn't even a question for me. I didn't have a job at the time and I had my emergency fund still, but it was, it was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to recoup this. And fortunately everything was fine, but there was like never a point in my decision where I was like, am I not going to do this? You know, like that's, that's the, the security I want people to feel when they go to the vet. Like you got to know that those things are going to happen. Like Daisy chewed on a battery. You know, we thought she was going to have to have gastrointestinal surgery and that cost another two grand. But because I have this emergency fund that I'm just like, I know my pets are dum-dums and they're going to hurt themselves. I wish more people would anticipate those kind of things. And I get it. Not everyone can, but it's so important when you have a pet to understand like the cost of it. You have pet insurance and have used it. I have pet insurance now for them. But when I had lost my job and first got Daisy, well, when I first got Daisy, everything was covered under the uh, nonprofit that I bought her under. So for the first six months, she said it wasn't technically mine. I was fostering her. And so it was a foster to adopt. And so after six months, she got cherry eye before I could get pet insurance, of course. So that was a surgery she had to undergo. And then she chewed a battery. And that was another surgery she had to undergo. And then I got pet insurance for the two of them. Cats are obsessive. Of the one they are closest to. And their world is dependent on us 24-7. This is, they assume that you are under their control. Jealous too. Oh, I am 100% under Dozer's control. And he knows it. He absolutely knows it. <laughs> that boy. Black plate. Oh, let me see. Oh boy, this is not going to fit in a regular box, is it? I don't even think it'll fit in this big guy. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Ah. Oh, yeah, that'll fit. That'll fit. Easy peasy. That's actually one of the main reasons we're waiting like two to three more years to try to have kids because, oh man, our kids expensive compared to pets. We already have two pets. We already know that we probably want to buy a bigger house. And as much as we both really want kids, we're like, we need to make sure that we're like solid, golden. Like, I know so many of my friends are like, we don't want to have kids because of the way that the economy is and just the prices of everything. And they can barely survive on their own. And they're like, we've made the decision that kids just aren't in our future. And that's so much more common now than I think it ever has been. <laughs> Dogs have owners, cats have staff, 100%, 100%. Although, I do think that Daisy thinks that we're her staff sometimes, too, because she is a smart cookie. She does the thing where, like, she knows what you say. She knows what you want from her, but then immediately she'll, like, try to test you. Be like, mm, are you actually going to hold me to doing that? And Grant, Grant gives in. She knows how to give her little puppy dog eyes and, you know, Grant will let her get away with stuff. Me, not so much. She knows that she's going to have to do what I say. You 
saw that your dog is part goat and cat too because it was a tiny when we got him and then it was around and then he was around two wait you saw your dog is part goat because it was tiny when we got him and then was around two cats growing up oh okay okay i had to read that a couple times to make it make sense where is my box cutter? I'm going to cut this box down so I don't have to stuff it so much with paper. Did you see that? I got up from the floor without using my hands. That's supposed to be like a sign of like good hips and knees, right? I'm actually starting with my personal trainer on Friday. And she is a, it's less personal training and more like, making sure that you're building strength in the areas that you need to. Because for those of you that don't know, I have hypermobility, meaning I don't, I rely on my muscles to keep all of my like joints from dislocating versus the tendons. So I have weak tendons and it makes some muscles overcompensate and some not activate at all. So what we're going to be working on is targeting those muscles that are underdeveloped that, you know, we've overcompensated with different types of movements to make sure that everything is balanced and we can get rid of my back pain and we can get rid of my shoulder pain and, 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 and. So I'm really excited about that. You have seven kids. Oldest is 27. Youngest is 19. They're expensive, but so worth it. I know. And that's, that's why I want kids. I know I've wanted kids for so long and Grant does too. Ooh. he's definitely the more like rational minded like oh we should you know start saving for their colleges when we have them and you know like be financially stable in the house we want and I'm like let's just have kids now we'll figure it out I think he's scared which uh, I get it, but like, come on. I ain't getting any younger. I think that's the thing I'm most worried about is like I turned 31 at the end of this month, next week. Oh my gosh, my birthday's next week. Weird. So I turn 31 and then like he is probably going to propose at the end of this year, which means we'll probably get married at the end of next year, which is like closer to me being 32, 33. And then like, we want to enjoy our time as a married couple for a little bit before then. So like 34 and we want to have two kids. So it's like, we got, we're running, we're running out of time. set in San Diego right now. Is it? I think it is. I think it's set a little bit. Oh God. I think it was like setting right as I started my live. Honestly, with daylight savings, I have no idea what time anything happens anymore. Oh, I guess you could have seen it through here. Okay. Red glass pitcher. You are going to be the bane of my existence, aren't you? You are. You are. Okay. Oh, boy. This guy is tall. Let's see if I have a box tall enough for him. I don't think it'll fit in a shoe box. Will it fit in you? Oh. Oh. Okay. I think just barely. I think just barely. Let's wrap it up in some bubble wrap. See how much height that adds. It's such a pretty picture. Oh, boy. You are never, ever ready. You are not ever really ready. 
Each one will be different. Yeah, I know. I know. I know all of that. Grant just, he thinks he's going to be ready. Magically one day, he's just going to be ready to get married. And then he's going to be ready to have kids. And I'm like, honey, that's not how the world works. You think anyone was just like ready to do any of these things? He's young. He's like two and a half years younger than me. So I'll give him a little bit of leeway, but... I'm also incredibly impatient and I have that type of personality that when I want something, I do it. You know, I don't hesitate on things. I'm like, okay, I want to go try to do this thing. I'm not afraid to leap headfirst into something. And it's good that we kind of have the balance between the two of us where he is the more like, let's hold back a little bit, but we'll see. Oh, Pi Day 3.14. What's today? Today is the 13th, 17th, 14th. Oh, today. Today is. That's what you were saying. What was the profit on that call picture? Um, so everything that I have is from an estate clear out. So it's not paid for. It's not like I didn't buy any of this inventory to sell it. But it did sell for $10. And then I just have to pay the packing material to ship it out. Would I ever cut my hair super short or shave my head? You know what? I had my hair short before and I don't like it because I have super thick straight hair. And when my hair is short, I have to style it. And when my hair is long like this, I barely have to brush it in the morning. And I am all about efficiency. I would like to roll out of bed and take five minutes to like throw some makeup on my face, make my coffee and run up to my desk for work. So I, I don't really like short hair on me, honestly. So with the... The way my like business model is set up and how it's so different from my mom's is because of that whole like I don't have to buy things and have an upfront cost when I'm listing all of them. So my main goal is like turning inventory over that like I don't care really how much the value of something is versus how short of a time it's spent on my shelves. And, you know, like if it's sitting here, it's not making me money because I can always get more things. So that's kind of why you'll see a difference of like what I suggest people do and my mom suggests people do because she purchases her inventory. So there is a cost of goods when she is listing all of them and selling all of them. Get off of here. I also made the mistake recently of using a bunch of my cardboard boxes to garden. I put them at the bottom of my taller planters to take up space. And now I don't have them to ship with. I realized the error in my ways, but my fig tree and my lemon tree took priority. All right, let's see if we can make this work. Oh, I think that'll work nicely. Okay, I got stuck a ton of paper in here. Make sure there's some on the side. See, shipping's not so scary. Things can look intimidating to ship, and I'm still pretty intimidated about those crystal bowls, mostly because I don't know what size box I'm going to need for them. But once you get into it, things are so much easier than the metal blocks that you create for them.
Red glass picture base. The video of my mom picking Rachel up was cool with the flight. Nice video. I haven't seen it yet, to be honest. I have a hard time like watching her videos uh, like as soon as she puts them out because she puts one out every day and I am a busy, busy guy. And also, I talk to her every day, so I already know what's happening. I don't need the updates. I get the updates. And I'm also in a lot of her videos. I know what happens. I was there. <laughs> but yeah, I do like her like lifestyle videos a lot. It shows her personality. She is an interesting creature, just like me. And it's nice that you guys are seeing like a more well-rounded version of who she is and not just, you know, the business savvy side. Like she's getting a lot more vulnerable too. And, you know, talking about things like me, like this is what our passion is from the history of what we had to grow up with. And like our brains are pretty much identical. Like we have the same brain and we have the same kind of like experiences growing up. And so it's really nice to be able to share with more people on fighting and overcoming all of that nonsense. Cake plate and crystal cracker tray. Cake plate. Cake plate. Oh boy. Is it going to fit? Would it fit? In? Nope. We need a bigger box. Would you fit in here? Are you too tall? <gasps> nope, you fit. And there's enough room for both of you. Boxes are almost sacred. You sort and hoard them from the grocery store. Ooh, you get them from the grocery store? I just get mine from all the Amazon purchases that I make. It's a problem. Amazon is way too convenient. And it's really difficult because, like, on one side, I'm like, well, the ethical, you know, reasons of not using Amazon. But at the same time, I'm like, well... If it wasn't so dang convenient, I wouldn't have to because going out and buying the stuff or like finding a small business around me, all of that takes time. And all we, we all know, I don't have time. I don't have a lot of time. Have I seen how T-E-M-U Timu perspective? I have not. Who are they? How do I look them up? What should I be finding? <laughs> I refuse to run out of bubble wrap. I should call or email bubble boy again to see what the status of my order is because it's been like three weeks it's been some time it's been some time this and then we'll wrap this guy there's the price tag I have a small town. The local store leaves them in front and back for us to take. That is amazing. Why do thumbs up count? Um, I think it has to do with the algorithm. So when you leave a thumbs up or you share a video, all of that counts as like engagement and interaction from like the YouTube algorithm. And that's how you can support a creator. That's like the thing that makes YouTube tell its algorithm that more people should be watching this. You know, more people would like this. It's a, it's a good thing. Like you like it, like thumbs up kind of thing. Uh, 
I always say the best way you can support a creator, even if you can't buy things from them, you can't send super chats, you can't, you know, buy their, uh, like memberships. It's like liking, sharing, commenting, all the things that you guys are doing. That's the thing that really, you know, supports creators. And that's what helps us grow our channel. It is, it's a tough world out there. It is rough being a creator in this day and age with all of the algorithm changes, all of the different platforms that you have to keep up with. Like I'm on TikTok and Instagram and YouTube and I post on LinkedIn sometimes. And you have to keep different content for each type of those platforms as well. Even though I repurpose most of my TikToks here, I change the tags and I change some of the um, titles and descriptions sometimes. Get in there. I want to put, why not? Put some of this in there in between, keep them separated. Then we stuff with paper, more paper on the side. More paper, more paper, more paper. Like these lives where I'm shipping one because I get stuff done that's always a plus for me but two it's a way that I can show you guys and like share more of my like philosophy and who I am as a person and talk about different topics I think that's really important and really hard for creators to do especially with you know, curated content or like shorts there's no way I can go into that much depth in a short you have to kind of surmise the context of a lot of it so this really helps like show you guys who I am Whoop. oh god doesn't ever actually stick to the like Amazon tape so I have to go over it wider to make sure it's stuck down oh boy okay well that was the last of the easy packages now we've got all the multi-item things oh boy and we don't have that much bubble wrap left so I'm hoping I'm hoping the math maths I'm hoping it adds up appropriately and we have a bunch of small items to ship even though I know that is not what is going to happen okay let's see what we got here Ooh, books love to see books on here because that is super simple these is my words serpent shadow and the serving dish oh son of a biscuit okay that one's big that one's big Book, ashtray, book, cool. Book, ashtray, book. Where did you come from? Uh, book, ashtray, between summer's longings and winter's end. Okay, I know where that one is. I know where that is. I know where that is. No, I don't. Ah, yes, I do. Woo! How easy was that? And I'm pretty sure all of that would fit in a small little box. Kimu just wraps in plastic sort of weird shipping package. Image wrap and gift without a box. Whatever shape it is, that's the package. Oh, I will have to check that out. That sounds really
really interesting. What was I doing? Ah! She will need a handout wrench soon as she's growing and going places. Oh yeah, I already, I already feel like I need a mod. How do you find a mod in this day and age? I don't know how my mom found mods. She's also been doing this a lot longer than me. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Fortunately, I haven't had any, you know, lives where I had trolls pop in like my mom does, but I have a feeling that that day is not far off. Oh, you haul stores have a competitive rate for bubble wrap, full sizes and wrapping paper. Oh, well, I might be going to U-Haul tomorrow, depending uh, how long this has. Wait a second. I have another roll of U-Haul bubble wrap. I do have another roll. That was a helpful reminder for me to just look up at all of the boxes that I have up there. Again, object permanent. <laughs> it's not going to fit. I need a box. You know what it might fit in though? The regional rate. Get out of here. Okay, this is, we had a deal. You'd be nice to me. Oh, and I have to remember, remember, Jordan, do not forget to schedule a pickup for tomorrow. You would be amazed at how many times I freaking do that. Luckily, I have a really good relationship with my postman and uh, I catch him, I catch him a lot. He knows, he knows what to expect on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, so. Always keep in good graces with your postman because they can be the bane of your existence or the most helpful hand. Oh yeah, my carrier picks all of these up straight from my house. He is amazing. I always make sure to help him load stuff into his truck for him so that he's not like bending over a thousand times. But yep. Pick them all up. Okay, look at that. One down. Oh, heavy. Okay, we got a sugar bowl. We got a fantasy mug. And we got the teacup. And then we've got the, ooh, the Cape Cod, yellow set of teacups, and ugh, more teacups. So many teacups. Why do I sell so many teacups? Why do I do this to myself? Okay, let's do the serving dish. These are my words and serpent shadow. These are my words. These are my words. That sounds like a book. That sounds like a book. Also, this means I have to list more books. I go through them so fast, which is great. These are my words. These are my words. Uh, and the, because I'm like, oh wait, I want to read that. I don't have time to read all these books. Whew. What time of day? Near end of his route? Ah, uh, I actually don't know. He comes anywhere from 11 to one. Some days it's like super early in the morning. Some days it is like 5 p.m. I love it when I had mine picked up Here's until, not you, not you, the elevators. I never said that. I never said that. Now I go to the post office every day. Yeah, I feel like if I start doing another sale a week, I'm going to have to go drop them off at the postal annex. I think it might be like, hey, ma'am, this is excessive. Can you not? 
but I must be yeah uh, towards the end of his shift. Is this right? Yes. I have the full set of this uh, serving ware, and I need to list it in my next show. But it is so cool. It's really hard to like piece out all of the serving sets too, because like I've got to list them all individually. And then if no one's interested in like one part of them, that's like 12 listings that I did that I'm going to run that nobody actually cares about. It's all it's such a hard gamble. That's a lot to add to his truck. I'm sorry. I mean, he offers, it must be at the end of his shift then if he's like always willing and able to take this stuff. Or maybe there just aren't a lot of packages picked up in this uh, neighborhood. We're dropping off. We'll all just get Amazon. They got different trucks. All I'm saying is I have a good relationship with him. And he's really nice and friendly. And he hasn't said no yet. So. often has service everywhere. I'm pretty sure there's a limit though. You know, if I was like, hey, I have 200 packages for you to pick up. Can you take this? They'd be like, mm, ma'am, what's going on? You might want to reconsider your life choices. Will this fit in this box? It's a possibility. It's a maybe. Hard, hard maybe. They get a bonus for every package they pick up. That's neat. Oh, they would send a vehicle. Okay. Okay. Vehicle pickup would be nice. That would be incredibly nice. Because that would mean I wouldn't have to put it in my vehicle. The Nifty Fisher has a huge pile of boxes picked up. Ooh. So you're saying there's a chance. Oh, no. I need a different box. here what happened here where did we go please do not do not do not exit my live stream without my warning this one's it the internet has a mind of its own this week technology is just leaving us in the past all right Layer on the bottom, bowl, bowl, layer around the bowl, books, layer around the books. Get three items, three items. Tracking slip. And maybe it depends on your region or your area. Zip code? Zip code. Depending on the staffing and like how many people they have or how many available male persons. Cause I remember I was in an Uber with someone that was, that was their like side business, but they were a 
uh, like step in, step in substitute male person. Um, so they would pick up the routes of the people that would call in sick that day or have PTO. And he was explaining to me how it's so much harder to do it that way because on a regular route, they pay you per house. But sometimes that can take you like five hours if you're not familiar with the route. And sometimes it can take you like two hours if you're super familiar with the route. So he was saying that sometimes if he gets places that he's done them before, he can pick up like two routes in a day. But others, if he's brand new, he'll have to like take a longer time to do them. So it's interesting how it all works out. And I'm not sure if that's the same in other areas, but I think since they're like a federal thing, it has to be pretty consistent throughout all of them. Your mom was a postmaster, but it's been a while. Are you city or rural? I'm like suburban. I'm not rural, but it's not like city either. I'm not like in San Diego proper, which I was before. Didn't really ship anything out from there though. I don't know. I don't know. Oh boy, this one's gonna be oh, the Swedish bowls. Let's do this. Let's just get it over with. Let's do it. And there's a crystal bowl. Oh my goodness, so many bowls. All right, in this box, we have one bowl. We have two, three bowls. Oh my goodness. And then we've got four, five, six bowls. Oh, lordy, lordy. What did I get myself into? I got a big box. It's okay. I got a big box. But look how, let me just, I am marveling at this set of Swedish crystal bowls because that blue is absolutely gorgeous. I love this. This is one of my favorite things about like randomly picking things up, like are randomly having things presented to me to list versus me like shopping for them because I never would have like known what to look up or how like what this was and it's stunning I also probably would have been really hesitant about shipping it but now I'm like well guess we gotta do it Ask my post office what is best. Yeah, I should. I feel like the system's working pretty well now. My post op man is always like happy and eager. I'm like, is this okay? He's like, absolutely, of course. So it's bougie blue. It is. It is so pretty. It's like a brilliant royal blue. Whoever is getting this, I hope that they're like hosting a dinner party soon or something. And use all of these brilliant bowls. Shh, we're not breaking things. Kitcheny bit? Is that what Tiffany says? The kitcheny bit? Where is? Where? Thank you for your video. You're 75 and am not able to do this type of job. Just trying to send you a compliment. Oh, thank you. See, and that's the other thing. I love meeting different people. And like, I my main goal with content creation is putting a smile on people's face and or helping them, you know, find some sort of motivation or overcome, you know, a block that they may have seen because they're like, oh, Jordan did that. It's not that hard. Or like, oh, Jordan could do that. Then maybe I can try. Like that, again, that is whole goal of content creation. So ooh, I am so happy that you feel that way and you're enjoying watching me attempt to pack things. aren't that bad. It's just finding a big enough box for them. That's really the only thing.
think one of the most surprising things about me and like the, the person that you see here today is I used to have crippling anxiety. Like I used to be one of those people that everything I did was led because of my anxiety. I thought that that was my like piece of like the, the piece that made me stand out from the rest, the, the part that made me super productive. And the reason that I had my job or the reason that people liked me is because I was this like super anxious, had to have everything going all the time. And when I finally let that go, and that is the hardest part of the struggle is understanding that you can let your anxiety go and it is not the source of your productivity. It like, like a light bulb went off. And I was like, oh, I am still this hyperproductive person. And I actually found that my output was stronger once I had let the anxiety go because I no longer felt like I had to. It was I wanted to. And that's such a more powerful driver and motivator than like this constant fear of needing to do something all the time. But even when you tell that to people, like my boyfriend, I've told him so many times, like, you need to let it go. Like, you have to be okay with not having your anxiety define you anymore. And he still is like holding on to that one piece where he's afraid that he won't be the productive person, this uh, successful, accomplished person if he lets go of all of his anxiety. So he just holds on to that like little tail piece of it that eventually starts to build up and build up and build up again. As a model, have I thought about doing TV? You know, I have had a lot of thoughts after the model camp that I went to about what I really want to do with my modeling. And I absolutely love it. I enjoy all the photographers that I work with. I love the art that I create out of it. But the time that it takes to go to casting calls, you know, get an agency, the time that you're spending doing all of that takes away from all the other things. And unfortunately, most of the casting calls are up in LA. That's a two hour drive for me. That is a full day that I would have to be committed to going up there, going to a casting call. And with my full time job, with my whatnot business, with my content creation, it would be really hard for me to do that. So I have been like back and forth weighing the options. Uh, San Diego Fashion Week is coming up. And my photographer friend was like, do you want to you know, be involved in this? Do you want to try to go to that casting call and walk on the show? And do you want to try to go to the Orange County one and go on to the bigger ones? And the whole point of doing that would be to get noticed so that I could go to the New York Fashion Week and like walk for designers and do all of that stuff. But I'm like, when do I have the time? Would it be fun? Thousand percent. Absolutely. Would I have to take time off of work? Yes. Would I have to take time off of whatnot? Yes. So I'm trying to right now juggle everything and figure out how I can do it, what time I want to commit to it. And if I just want to stay doing modeling for fun and as a hobby and creating art and I've created art that I put up on my walls and I have an entire book of some of the pieces that I've done with my favorite photographers that is stunning and gorgeous and I'll have that forever and I'll be able to show that to my kids and the previous work that I have done with brands. And all of it's taught me how to kind of leverage my skills for modeling towards being a content creator. And that's kind of where I'm taking it now is I am doing more brand partnerships and deals and creating content for brands via video and images that are more um, less curated and less, you know, high profile and more just for like basic campaigns. But I have had my images in national campaigns already. I've done, you know, big things. And the payout for a model is not as good as what I'm doing on the other end with my marketing and my full-time job. So that's another thing I have to assess is I'd be taking a huge pay cut and a risk trying to go out and be a model. And I'm just, I don't know. I, I don't want to do that. I like the money I'm making and I'm really good at my job. So it's all this like constant balance of things. How you wrap that in bubble wrap is how Timu ships their items you purchase from their website. Oh, okay. Interesting. Well, then maybe I have watched it. <laughs> I just absorbed it and had no idea what I was doing. 
Does anxiety affect adrenaline levels? I know it raises blood pressure. So I know stress and anxiety are kind of, you know, they go hand in hand and stress raises your cortisol level. I am not by any means a scientist or a doctor or know what I'm talking about with all of this, but I do know that living in a constant state of anxiety gives you that raised cortisol that does things like affect your thyroid and affects your stomach and makes you so you can't sleep and will start to manifest in illnesses because it's trying to tell your body and your brain to slow down. And the only way it can tell you to do that is to physically impair you. So... I, I think it, I think it does. You're super talented and intelligent. Keep chasing your passion. Thank you. I, I hear this all the time and I don't think that my, my brain and my wits are like, sure. I, in some things I'm smarter than the average bear, but in other things I am completely ignorant. Like I can't remember the difference between nonfiction and fiction. So like it's, I think it's less about intelligence and more about uh, EQ, emotional intelligence. And through all of my research, through all of my self-development, self-help, I've learned that emotional intelligence, you can develop and grow. Whereas intelligence, you're stuck with it. Whatever you get, you get. Whatever cards you're dealt of how your brain works, that's it. But your emotional intelligence, that can change. And that will make you stand out from other people in so much bigger of a way than any level of intelligence ever will. But I appreciate you for recognizing and noticing. I definitely pride myself in trying to be a strong, smart, you know, thoughtful person with everything that I do. Uh, my big thing is I say intention over attention. I Try not to do attention-seeking behavior. I won't do, you know, flashy, eye-catching clickbait in my videos. Or, you know, I'm not doing some sort of, like, trend or saying something just because I want more attention, more likes, more traction, more virality in my videos. I would like consistency, and I would like to show you the intentionality of how I am bringing myself to you as a creator and building up my channel. And I'm just, I'm really happy that that is coming through a lot of the time because it's really hard. I think we talked about this before, like being a marketer, you see all of the things that work to get that attention. And as a marketer, that's kind of your goal is to get your eyes on, get eyes on as many, get your product in front of as many eyes as possible. And there's this like fine line between ethical marketing and marketers that will get your attention just to get it. And when developing content, you want things to do good. You want to grow your audience retention. You want to be in front of more people. But I also want to make sure that I'm staying genuine and authentic and honest with all of that. And oh my gosh, this is going to be so much to put in the box. <sighs> Okay, that one I could not. I could not get up without my hands on that one. We're getting we're getting weaker. I'm feeling it. Do we think this box is big enough, or are we gonna go with the daddy of all boxes? I think we're gonna go big box and cut it down if we need to. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. We're running out of paper, too. See, I wish that all these darn stacking bowls could stack inside the box, but the bubble wrap prevents that. I 
really hope this one gets there because uh, that would be sad. It's going to get there. We have faith. It's going to get there. Uh, okay, we'll add some of this stuff since we have it. And that is all of my packing material. We did it though. We're good. We're good. We're golden. Which one was this? This one. Should I cut down this box a little? Okay, we're gonna cut down the box a little bit. Come on. Oh, and I gotta take my address off of this one. Oh God, what am I breaking? All right, aha, much better, much better. Um, um, paper, looking for just like scraps of paper now everywhere. There we go. Oh, I really like that there's like two layers of cardboard on the top. I feel like that gives it even more cushion and protection. But I'm going to put just why not? Why not? Just to make sure Got it. Did I put the packing slip in here? Did I put the shipping label in there? over here. Crisis averted. <gasps> now we got to do this again. <laughs> Shipping is fun. Okay. Close up this whole thing here. What a beautiful package is coming to you. <laughs> I'll be like Christmas morning. Too, can ship things in ugly boxes. Alrighty. You just stay there. Whew, I only have two more things to ship, but I am completely out of 
shipping material. So I think those are going to have to wait till tomorrow to go out so I can go to the store and get more shipping material. But let me see if there's any last comments I didn't respond to. Oh. Can you position my camera so you can see what we're doing? I tried to angle it a little more down, but uh, I realized that it's always just like, you know, right up here. We can barely see what I'm doing. Next time, one of these times, one of these times, I will get it. I will get it right. I'll be able to schedule my live, you know? <laughs> we'll be able to be here together. Um, doesn't stack as nice when loading into a vehicle to deliver. I know, I know, but honestly, you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. And I don't want the weight. I guess the weight isn't really a concern when the whole package is like 10 pounds, but I am an excellent shipper. I, I try my best. Okay. That's, and that's the best I can do. It's cathartic to talk or listen to other views that can help make your own decisions. It is. It is. I'm a big, like, talk to think kind of person. And I, I like sharing my worldview and also getting feedback about different things just to see, because I know everybody has a different perspective and it's so important to remember that other people have different perspectives and that everything is nuanced. Everything in the world is nuanced. No one's ever right. No one's ever wrong. That's my personal opinion is everyone is just doing their best with the information that they have. And that's how everyone is going about life. The box teaches us a lesson is what the inside that counts. That's right. That's right. Oh, ask your neighbors through next door to save your packing materials. That is a really, really good idea. I am going to be making a post on next door. That is a fantastic idea. You need a box resizer tool. They are great. I do. I mean, it, this, this works good enough for me for now, but yeah. That would also mean I'd have to like plan ahead of time when I was making boxes and not just kind of like go with it as I go. But this is like the only, I did two. I only did two. I only did two out of 30 boxes. I had to cut them down like this. So I feel like that's pretty good. We're at a pretty, pretty high success rate of boxes that look like actual boxes. And even that one, like I cut that one down, but it's still flat. It's still flat. <laughs> I only have one. Oh boy. And those teacups have four pieces in them. So that's three things. And then teacup, sugar bowl, fancy fiesta mug. Okay. Okay. I can do it. I can do it. Well, I'll get them done tomorrow. I appreciate all of you guys. Um, I am going to go eat some dinner because you know, it's eight 15 at night. I'm going to go hang out with Daisy and then I'm going to remember to call a pickup. I'm going to remember to call a pickup. I will see you guys all soon. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do a live prep for my whatnot sale on Friday because it is one, my friend's birthday, and two, a family is in town. But that is going to be my cadence moving forward. On Tuesdays at 6 p.m., I'm going to do a live ship with me. And then on Fridays, I'm going to do a list with me. So keep, uh, keep those in your scopes. I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much for joining me here. And I will see you guys next time. Bye, everybody.